Hey, Michael. How are you going? How are you going, my friend? <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. It's, it's so been, great it, to be here, man. This is awesome. It's been a while, man. It has. As just were we really only thirteen? Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I think so. I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually not entirely sure how old, but I think I was in eighth or ninth grade or something like that, and uh, I think you were a grade below me or something. Um, but yeah, you would have been back. Remember. It, yeah, it, it, it would have been. It would have been back in the like the what is it, the nineteen ninety or something. It's it's it, it's it's many moons ago. I remember when you approached me actually because you were the one who took the initiative. You know, at the yeah, very cool. beginning, you came came out to me in the in between you know lessons and asked me if I wanted to be in a band. You and somebody else was it. I can't, I can't remember. It's been it's been so long. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yeah. What what have you been up to? What have you been up to, man? Since since then, yeah. How long have we got? <laughs> ah, as as long as you want, buddy. It's uh, I'm really like we well, obviously we've got to catch up on the last what is it nearly thirty years. You know, it's it's probably going to take a while. But look, I, I'm just I'm I'm super 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 happy to have you here, man. Likewise, it's great. I, I was watching last week when you had Espen on. That was very inspirational as well, actually. So uh, also to get an Excellent. idea of the sort of the the format that you want to do. Um, but yeah, what have I been doing? I um, when we two started out, it was uh, it couldn't be hard enough, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with me. Metallica. That's uh, well. That was the defining songs back then. Yeah, it was black album and all that. And um, I guess after that, I had a longer period where I sort of went a bit soft, while you just sort of went even harder. <laughs> Is that true? And then lately, as in like the last, I don't know, ten years, fifteen years, I actually come back to some of the more hard, hard hitting stuff, um, both in the things that I listen to, but also in the things that I play myself. But I'm, we'll get back into that later. Um, so yeah, I've been around. Um, my 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 training is actually as a musical performer, like a theater singer. And then people will obviously start thinking about Le Miserable and all that stuff. It's not really so much that I've done. <laughs> it's more of a you know, it's not really a genre. It's more of a it's a it's a it's a way of performing, right? So you can have all genres in musical theater. And I've mostly done the rock stuff. <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, all this comes full circle back to, you know, playing in bands and all that. And uh, I've been in various projects since you and I parted ways. And um, yeah, right now I'm with Stillskin. Excellent. Well, look, the first song, High Roller, is, yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing, really cool, hard-hitting power rock. Um, we're going to listen to uh, to one of your... your I think that is your latest single. We're gonna we're gonna finish off on that a bit later. Uh, but how 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 did you guys start? Actually, the the story of Silkskin starts uh, I don't know more than ten years ago actually, where I had moved to uh, Svendborg, which is uh, you know obviously where it is, but to people in Australia they may not know what Svendborg is. It's a, a bigger pr uh, provincial town in Denmark. And I had moved there due to some work that I did and was singing in a um, world music band. So that's, that's an, a, actually an orchestra, a big orchestra with, with, um, that plays songs inspired by African culture and a lot of you know, percussionist uh, rhythm and stuff like that. Wicked. And the, on one of the concerts, the sound guy was the other guitarist from Silskin. Uh, he does a lot of, you know, uh, uh, sound engineering jobs and uh, recording people in the studio and that kind of thing as well. And he, at the time, had another original band. They, they did their own music. And then he and some of the guys from the band wanted to have a, a cover rock project going on sort of on the side of that. And I was uh, hired into that project first, and then things happened, and the the, the main project sort of 
uh, washed out a bit, and and then the cover project ended up becoming the the main project, and we started writing songs. And back then we weren't called Skillskin. We we've been through three or four iterations of names right. over the course of ten years, um, but that's where it began. So there there you had sort of the the core of the band, and uh, yeah, then. One person got pregnant, and we had to stop a bit. And then somebody went away for uh, education. We had to wait a bit, and we sort of been going, you know, back and forth, and not really finding the momentum um, until until now, actually, where we've sort of found our current um, lineup. We just got a new uh, drummer, and um, yeah, the vibe is good. We have the, a lot of material. Line, you know, waiting to be to be realized, being recorded and released eventually. So we have a lot of work to do. We actually had a lot of concerts lined up for for this summer, and then Corona hit, and all of a sudden we didn't have any jobs. Yeah. Nah. So uh, again, we sort of, <laughs> you know, things have stopped a bit, but we, we hope that it's just a phase. Yeah, I was, uh, again, I think every everybody I've been speaking with so far, you know, have all been bringing up the whole coronavirus thing. It's just, yeah. it's just such a Sorry. such a crazy, yeah, it's just such a crazy thing because obviously they're like, you, you simply just gotta wait it out. Uh, but but being in the entertainment industry, it's it's, yeah, I'm assuming it would hurt so bad because again, there simply is nothing you can do. Like you, you see a couple of of other artists sort of working from home and, and doing um, you know some some remote work but but the, but the fact is you know as an entertainer in a band you know you want to be on stage um, yeah so uh, is there any, is there anything you guys have been able to do over uh, over the last couple of weeks that you'd be able to do remotely like uh, if you said you had some new songs coming on um, is there anything that you've been able to sort of start you know pull, putting ideas together um, and sort of being able to work individually yeah, we, we did. Uh, we actually sort of tried to embrace the whole situation, and then we we actually did a little home video <laughs> where each of us would, you know, record ourselves playing "Arise Again." Actually, the the single will will be playing later. Yep. Um, so we recorded ourselves playing it, and then we sort of put that video together. Um, it's not going to be sort of the the official video, but it was just to put something out there to help it on the way, if you will. Yeah. And we've, um, yeah, I mean, me and and uh, Jakob, the, the other guitarist, we have we have sort of met in each corner of the studio to, sorry, to do some um, some mixing of stuff and de- debating some things about. Uh, we, we work on backing tracks for for our live performance and. And so stuff, stuff like that, we, we can work on that while we're not actually uh, rehearsing, rehearsing everybody together. Yeah. So stuff like that we've been doing, and of course we, I mean, sitting at home, my guitar, looking out the window, <laughs> start writing songs. So uh, a few new songs, also that uh, sort of see seen the light of day. Um, the rest of the band doesn't know yet, but uh, that's good. You yeah, gotta have yeah. some, uh, yeah. <laughs> You gotta have some, uh, yeah. some 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 little treats when you when the sky is blue again. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that that's what we're gonna throw ourselves into when we get back, definitely. But hey, I mean, we're not it, under the circumstances. We're not really we're not the ones who are most you know touched by the corona. To be off, to be fair, because we're we're not relying on on the income from the band to survive and to have bread, bread on the table, you know, so we, we all have other means of, you know, earning our living so far. Um, so it's just annoying, you know, it's, it's, it's just, we had these concerts lined up and we wanted to play these small festivals and we're really looking forward to that. And, you know, new drummer, great energy, you just want to go out there and do our thing and then one by one, they just fall. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. House of, house of cars, you know, that that sucks. But um, most of the places have decided to just go with the same lineup for the, you know, for next year's um, festival. So, uh, hopes are up for 2021, I guess. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> hope, the, 
hopefully we have a vaccine out by then. Um, look, there's actually something that I've been I've been wanting to ask you, um, and that is again because I remember when I when when we met back in the day, you had already been playing guitar for for quite some time, and um, and and one of the things that I uh, sort of is set out to ask a lot of my, my, my guests about is, is sort of how music entered your life and what are your early influences? Like how did, how, cause obviously you've been playing since you were, how old? I believe I started playing guitar when I was 10. Uh, yep. but that was like, that was classical guitar, you know, with my foot on this little footrest and you know, like properly seated, uh, yeah, so that's my background as a guitarist. I never actually took any lessons in electric guitar. That's sort of something that just came on its own. And when you met me, I was, let's just be fair, I, I was not a very good electric guitarist at the time. <laughs> I, I remember the, the day I discovered a power chord. Uh, that was actually, you remember that uh, during, uh, in between, uh, uh, lessons we could go to the music room and all the musicians of the school sort of get together there and just jam or whatever happened and there was this guy i forgot his name now but, but he knew a power chord I was like, oh <laughs> dude that sounds so cool how does he do that and i was playing the, the open i was on playing the open spanish guitar chords and that doesn't go well with distortion guitar you know and when i was and i guess we were like what you say 13, 14 years old, and something like and that. And that was just like, I just had an epiphany when I saw him playing those chords. I mean, power chords are so easy, you know, but I just, I hadn't understood how that worked at the time. So that, I remember that very vividly. But I guess my, my early influence, influences in musical tastes comes from uh, my dad, who was uh, listening to music a lot at home, so that those were dire straits and uh, Phil Collins, Elton John, uh, also, was there a bit of, oh, Genesis and stuff like that. He listened to a lot of those things. And, and then I, I was sitting with my, my tape recorder, one of those old ones, you know, we had a, a, a radio with built-in tape uh, recorders in it. And I was sitting in, in sort of a, um, in the middle of the house where I grew up, we had a, a, like a hallway and all the other rooms were sort of connected to this hallway. But if you closed all the doors, it was just dark because there were no windows in the hallway itself. So I was sitting in the dark in this hallway with my, with my uh, tape recorder, listening to the radio with my finger on the record button because if something cool came up, I have to record it really fast so I could have it, you know, for posterity. And obviously that meant I had a lot of mixtapes without the first 10, 15 seconds of anything because <laughs> I had to figure out if, if, it, if it was a good song first. So I had a lot of half recordings of, I remember that Def Leppard, that was one of the bands that yes. I listened to. And I, at the time I didn't know it was Def Leppard though. I just knew it was a cool song on the radio. It wasn't until later I was like, oh, <laughs> that's Def Leppard. Okay, cool. Um, and Boston and... I don't know, whatever else. I haven't, you know, I don't even have a clue where those tapes are anymore. <laughs> they would be so great to, to dig them out if I have them somewhere. But but that's my early influences, I guess. And then, obviously, in the early years, I was a bit of a glam-poodle rocker. <laughs> uh, bon Jovi, uh, the early years, you know, Slippery I remember Wins, that. Uh, Keep the Faith came out right at the time when... What was that? That's that is around the time when you and I played together. Yeah, early nineties. Um, something like that. And, yeah, yeah. and that that was an awesome album as well, I think. Still is. Still is probably the Still best is. one of the best Majority albums for sure. Slipper yeah. when we're in New Jersey and, and Keep the Faith. Yeah. It's no, that's the goal in, in, in my book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I remember I was a big fan of uh, Richie Sambora, the guitarist from Bon Jovi. I mean, if there was, there was nothing I would want more than a Stetson cowboy hat <laughs> and a long leather trench coat. Because in the video for uh, Bed of Roses, he was standing on top of a mountain in his 
As you do. Code, and a, a helicopter was flying around him with a with, with the camera. And he was playing his solo up there, and I win. Win is his air, and I was like, I want to be him. <laughs> and so that was my my first guitar hero, I guess. Richie Zambora from Bon Jovi. Yeah, man. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, in the years when when you and I were playing together, uh, Dizzy Miss Lizzy came along. Um, I guess oh, the, yeah. those are the two albums that I'm thinking most about when I'm thinking back on the time uh, down on Canalewai, where you lived. And oh, the, yeah. The, the first Dizzy Miss Lizzy album yeah. and the Black Album by Metallica. Those were sort of the... That's like the soundtrack of that time for me when I when I'm thinking back. Yeah, um, and I, if I remember correctly, we played some Metallica as well, didn't we? Quite absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think actually, uh, it, it, it's it's so funny. It's I never thought you know that that power chord thing had ever been an issue with you because I only remember us playing playing rock. Uh, I deliberately put on my Guns N' Roses shirt because I yeah. remember you. <laughs> I, I remember your sweet child of mine. I, I think I think I actually. I think you actually introduced me to, to to that song. I don't think I really had heard too much of Guns N' Roses prior to us us playing, because uh, I was more into like you know the more heavier stuff if you like, like you know Metallica, Alice in Chains, and Nirvana and all that. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, like I remember we we played uh, Nothing Else Matters, we played Into Sandman. I think Into Sandman was actually one of the first songs I learned on drums because you know it's it's pretty pretty freaking straightforward. <laughs> um, it's actually, I mean, it's a really it's actually a really great drum. Uh, riff he has there is super so, like it's it's so basic man it's so basic it's like meat and potatoes as we call it here though so. um, but uh, yeah and and uh, look and all pretty much all the albums you just mentioned are the albums that sort of define my youth and and, and yours too obviously you know yeah. I, I've I've listened to all of the old Def Leppard as well um, Genesis has been a massive influence uh, on, on myself as well. Um, but but all those it, but it's so funny when you mention all those albums all those artists as um, as you growing up because if you're saying that you sort of grew up on, on, on classical guitar this is not exactly classical <laughs> so yeah, when I'm did sure that switch my, <laughs> I'm sure if you ask my guitar teacher uh, he probably will not remember me as the most disciplined student he had. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, I don't think that I was actually really interested in classical guitar. Don't get me wrong, I like classical. Actually, I have a very broad taste in music, and I enjoy listening to classical music also for re you know winding down and relaxing and all that. But it didn't really appeal to me that much. Um, so, so I don't think that I was ever truly a classical musician, if that makes sense. Mm. Uh, and, it, but, and it didn't take long. I mean, like I started when I was 10 and then around 13, so three or four years later, I sort of discovered uh, rhythmical music and that was pretty much it for me. Then it, it was over with, <laughs> with the classical guitar. Um, but I'm really happy that I actually have that schooling with me because now I actually know how to read music. Um, that comes from from classical guitar originally and and I know actually I mean a lot of uh, guitar players that just go straight to the electrical guitar and starts tabbing and playing um, playing uh, scales and stuff they, they might be really great guitarists but they don't actually know the name of the notes that on, a, on the on a piece of paper yeah and yeah I actually really appreciate having that basic musical schooling with me um, I am obviously not as proficient in, in as I used to be playing that kind of music now, but but I still feel that that have given me some sort of leverage in terms of my my life with music. Basically, also because I've, I've done a lot of other things with music, I, I my my um, my business card <laughs> could read a musician and music teacher and singing teacher and vocal coach and musical director and musical performer you know I've, I've done so many different things with music and just you know knowing music is so basic to everything that i do yeah so yeah in terms of that it's just a great thing to have gotten with me so thank you Nils, my my trial guitar teacher from back then 
<laughs> shout out. I'm really happy for um, uh, shout out to Nils. I'm very happy for what he gave me. Definitely. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well, look, I, 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 I suppose music. Music in general. Um, I've, I've had a chat to some of the other some of the other guests about that as well. Music in general is almost like a like a language. Uh, like you don't you don't necessarily need to be able to to be able to communicate, you know, verbally. Uh, as long as you sort of can play an instrument, you have this sort of magical connection. Um, and I'm sure I'm sure it's been the same same for you as well. But in in all my sort of travels and my endeavors over the last couple of decades in in music. Uh, like you, you know, the fact is that you can you can walk into a room without knowing each other. You might have completely different tastes uh, in in music, but you can sit down and you can you can make you can make magic. Um, so, and I'm assuming you yourself, sort of being in in, in a rock band now, um, you've also been involved in, in musicals. Uh, you said before, and, and, and theater and stuff. How how do you sort of put all those different genres together, and, and how how has music uh, sort of worked its way as as a as a red line, if you like, where if you know what I'm trying to say? Well, if I can just go just go back a little bit and just sort of a take a take off from a slightly different angle. I would say sure, that yeah, when please. I when I when I started music, I started back in like an elementary uh, elementary music kindergarten thing. Uh, where you learned how to play the the little uh, you know blood fluid. I have no idea what that is in English. A flute. <laughs> a flute, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you learn to play this flute that everybody, and you learn how to do a little, uh, little uh, rhythmical things with the cl clavis, clavis. Mm. I'm yep. lacking English words, but you get my point. Um, and then after that, I was I, I I had to sort of choose my instrument, and I wanted to play the clarinet. Oh wow! Uh, and <laughs> Yeah, and then things would have been different. <laughs> uh, but my father actually said, "No, you're gonna play guitar." That was the maybe the one time in my life when my dad actually put his foot down and said, uh, "No, you're not doing that. You're doing that." Because usually, my parents have been very supportive in helping me do what I, where I was sort of, you know where the wind would take me. <laughs> I tried many different things, uh, many hobbies when I was a kid, and I was driven to everywhere. But on this one point, my dad actually said no. So I started playing guitar, and I have thanked him many, many, many times in, in, my, in my head afterwards, because that was, that was a very good decision <laughs> for me. Uh, nothing bad about clarinet, but I think for me this was... It has meant so much because, and then we get into what you were actually asking me. It, it's just something that you can take with you everywhere. A guitar is, and you know, it's a very portable instrument. It's a very versatile instrument. You can sing at the same time. I would never start singing if I had a clarinet in my mouth. <laughs> so, so you know, it's just, it's something that has shaped me a lot. And I remember having, you know many, many years of sitting at bonfires with a guitar and a case of beer, <laughs> uh, watching mm. the sun come up, you know, looking into the flames, just playing, people singing along, that kind of thing. I, I'm, I'm eternally grateful for having had that. It's, uh, yeah. it's amazing. So did that answer your question in any way? <laughs> Kind of. It, it still it still paints a picture of, of you know how how music again can sort of bring people together. Um, and again, yeah, I, I suppose like the whole the whole campfire uh, the whole campfire thing is, is so universal as well. Like you, you you see that all over the world, regardless of climate, regardless of of people. You know whether again whether you are uh, rich or poor. You know any anywhere in the world where you are. Um, music and campfire guitar is, you know, something again that that, that unites people. Uh, or, or you can sit again. You can sit in your own home, and if you have friends and family over, it doesn't necessarily have to be in front of a campfire. But um, it's yeah, I, I understand 100 percent what, what, what you mean. Um, and again, it's it's also something again that, that sort of um, encourages singing, uh, which again is, is another super super interesting aspect of, of music as well. Um, uh, uh, there, there's just it's just one one funny thing I thought about when you mentioned you were eternally grateful for for the guitar rather than the clarinet. Um, you would never have been able to stand on top of a mountaintop playing clarinet 
in in uh, as as as, as Richard Sambora, it would have looked it would look slightly odd, I suppose. So uh, so yeah, so so, so the guitar, uh, I, I get it. The guitar is again, it's it's, it's a rock instrument. Um, so and uh, another thing I was um I, I was curious about uh, you you're currently working as a musical teacher, is that right? Yep, I make my money uh, teaching musical theater and English. Actually, don't judge me too hard. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> um, yeah, uh, that that comes obviously from my from my actual education as a musical theater performer. I don't know if you're aware, and, and probably people not in Australia at least, but that um, we have only one musical academy in Denmark for people who want to study theater, musical theater. It's in Fredericia, and that's also where, until recently, we had a, one of the biggest musical theater theaters in Denmark, and so there's a whole community going on over there. And for for a couple of years, that was that was my life. Um, but then gradually, I I I, I, it, I I sort of changed lanes because I wasn't really I wasn't really cut out for the lifestyle of a theater performer. I mean, you you, you work nights, obviously, and I started getting a little lonely doing that all the time. Mm. So uh, a friend of mine, uh, without actually knowing that I had these thoughts, uh, he would he sent me a link online for, uh, with a job description of uh, that that read "After school is Surya Musical layer, which in English is something like "Boarding school is looking for a musical theater teacher." So musical oh, wow. theatre teacher wanted, right? And I was like, "Did you read my mind?" Because <laughs> mm. I was thinking, as, as, as part of the story is that I actually went to the teacher seminar for one year before I started that education. So I had had the thought of becoming a teacher. Um, I like teaching, so I went there and got the job. And it's that's like I don't know, eighteen years ago now. And I've been working three different places, but all of them have the one thing in common that I've been working with musical theater in one shape or form. So that's my my main job right now. And yeah. then parallel to that, I've had, I've had my, my music musician's life, if you will, um, which has been everything ranging from your average uh, pop cover band playing at numerous weddings and you know. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do know that all too well, all too well. Yes. Um, but then, you know, on, uh, about 10 years ago, this whole thing about writing music uh, uh, on my own has sort of taken, not that I didn't do it back then. I mean, I remember all the way back from the, the double tape recorder I was mentioning, I actually did very, very early demos when I was, I don't know, again, 14 years old or so. That was an interesting way of doing a demo because I didn't have a multi-track recording device. So what I would do was, take one tape, put it into the recording side of the ghetto blaster or mini <laughs> stereo. I had a little uh, a little uh, microphone that hanging from the ceiling and I would sing the lead and play chords. Then I would take the tape into the other tape, uh, tape uh, player and put a new tape into the recording bit. I would then play what I just yeah. recorded and sing this harmony voice and do whatever doodly solo stuff on top of that and that would go together into the second tape so yeah. in that way I sort of have a four track recorder in a way so that's how my songwriting started those tapes are also not available anywhere any anymore and I'm uh, I'm equally part happy that they don't <laughs> and, and I'm curious to hear them because I would actually have loved to hear them now but um yeah, fast forward to 10 years ago or so, where, where it sort of picked up and, and became part of my life as a musician to write music. Because we sort of, all of a sudden I had a project that actually was working seriously with writing stuff. Um, and some of the songs that we play even to this day in Stillskin are actually brought with us all the way up from back then. Um, some of them have been revamped <laughs> over the years, uh, updated a bit and maybe given a slightly more modern rock tone. 
Um, but essentially, it's the same songs. So uh, so far, they have they have stood the test of time, at least internally with the band. Yeah, awesome. It, it, it's actually it, it's actually another another thing that I'm I'm curious to to, um, to ask you about as well is sort of like how you guys go around the the, the songwriting process. Um, but I think you just mentioned that so like like you do you have some ideas that you bring in or, is, or do you do the entire songs? Do you do lyrics as well? Or do you do uh, some of the songs uh, like or do you do some of the songs together? Like someone brings an idea and some you know adds something to it or. Or how does it work? It's a uh, it, it's difficult to generalize it totally, but but I, I guess in generally speaking, I am one of the 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 main songwriters in the band. But but it's very seldom that one of us comes with a finished song. It's often someone brings brings in a verse and a chorus, or someone brings in a a nice riff, or not so much. Not so much lyrics. It's often it's usually the music first, and then the lyrics comes afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, over the years I've brought a lot of stuff in, and most of the stuff survives. <laughs> Once or twice I've been told that that's for the solo album. That's uh, that's another word for uh, yeah, we don't like it. <laughs> um, am I coming so through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but, so, but, 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 so, are you, are you, uh, are you doing any solo stuff as well? Is that what you were saying? In school? No, uh, like in your, like, like your own music. Are you doing any under the Michael Christensen brand or? Oh, like that? No, 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 no. It's just, it's just when when I bring a song to the band and it doesn't really, people don't really like it that much. Yeah, cool. I'm just being told. That's for the solo album. That's just a friendly way of saying, yeah. Ah, oh, no. God, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fair no, enough. No, there is no solo album, uh, and there's no plans for a solo album either, but um, it's, an, it's a friendly way of saying it, you know. But but most of the things survive in one shape or form. Um, and then, then, of course, there's a whole process of them getting together, together with the band and figuring out how does it sound when it's played by Stillskin. What I usually do is I, I make... Uh, a little demo at home, uh, just with the uh, you know some freeware on my computer, but but usually with a, a, a basic idea of drum beat and maybe some guitar riffs and and a melody, not necessarily the lyrics, but at least maybe how the melody could be, and then everything takes shapes takes shapes after that, and usually it's. I don't, well, that, sometimes it actually changes quite a bit, but but it's always with a with a respect for the original idea. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there are a couple of songs maybe that that was so finished that it, they were more or less just you know adopted as they were. But but it also changed changed uh, over the years because we we also changed our lineup and and of course a new new people that comes into the equation and and new collaborations um, evolve right now it's uh, it's a a lot of the lyrics are written by our current lead singer for instance uh, and she has a really good nose for, for for the melody so often we sort of push that over there and something good comes back um, so yeah it, it, we don't have any special way of working that is sort of set in stone, but but um, I think if if we if we look back, then I am definitely one of those who have contributed a lot, at least, to the yeah. musical process. And then there's the whole thing of you know recording things, which also takes forever because we do layer on layer on layer, and sometimes we get a little carried away and. You, you do, step back yeah. and you come back and listen and you're like, what the hell happened? Um, we have certain uh, certain things that we, we that we used to say uh, like, like we, we all really like um, vocal harmonies, but sometimes we get carried away with vocal harmonies to a point where it it becomes a little too toto. Uh, right. You know what I mean. 
again, I, I do. love Toto. There's nothing bad, bad with uh, nothing wrong with Toto, but it, it's not Stillskin, and Stillskin is not meant to sound like Toto. So when it, when things get a little too produced uh, in the vocal department, we sort of usually try to to cut it back a bit. Um, but we like the we like the the hard solid foundation with some nice uh, vocalization on top you could say that's sort of the maybe the, the 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 easy way to describe the sound that we're going for in still skin yeah i was about to say so the um the the new single which we which we're going to listen to later uh has a has a very very raw very in my opinion quite international sound uh it's it's, it's a bit different to uh to the sound of, of of high roller um how, how about like how do you record that because again it sounds like a like a really really good production i'm so happy you mentioned it because the production of rise again has taken forever <laughs> right um it's well first of all a big shout out to jakob the other guitarist who is uh, our let's say our resident producer he's the man at the at the computer dialing stuff in where I usually have more of a producer uh, cap on when we're in the studio so I'm sitting right behind him having an opinion but he's the one actually fiddling about and doing it you know um, so he's done a tremendous amount of work on the production at home I and mean, we record everything ourselves in our studio awesome so all that's been done after his work is that we've sent it to to a mastering guy who who has you know, done the, the final touches on it. And in that process, we actually, we tried, I'm not even sure, I mean, five or six different mastering guys who came back with a with their take on how Rise Again was supposed to sound. And when we found the, the guy that we went with, he actually ended up making three or four further iterations of his mix before we sort of felt there that is. So it's been a process for us to, one, figure out how to get the sound we want, and two, of course, figure out what is the sound we want. Um, so I think Rise Again represents very well the sound that we like Stillskin to have at the moment. And then you mm. mentioned that High Roller has another sound, and that's, that's absolutely correct. I mean, that's more like an old-school rock and roll kind of song. Um, and I guess Stillskin is somewhere in between those two, like sort of the old school rock and roll, a bit 70s inspired, late 70s inspired rock, and then up to something more modern and even a bit progressive at times. We are somewhere in that spectrum. Um, so please don't ask me what, how I would define our music because I have no idea. <laughs> it's just a... Uh... It's rock, you know. <laughs> it's it's rock. Yeah. Look, I I think I think sometimes people get a little bit too caught up in in the whole sub sub genre. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, if it's got a couple of, uh, of guitars with a bit of distortion on, drums, bass, and, and and a cool vocal, that's rock music. Um, One then depend bass and a drummer. That's it. That's it. Good old Tim Tim Christensen. <laughs> um, look. As I said, like R Rise Again has a really, really cool sound, but that's just one song. Have you? How many songs have you got? Uh, that because is what was that? Was that a part of, of an EP, or are you planning on doing a, a full album, or, or what's what does the future actually, look like? Yeah, right now we're actually finishing a couple of singles because we had some things in the pipeline with our old drummer, and we sort of just wanted to get those out of the way. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we love, we love the songs, but we we wanted to get those out there and get them done, so we could sort of draw the line in the sand and you know get our new drummer into the process of writing music. Yeah. And we were we were so far in the recording of the songs that we didn't want to go back and start all over again with the new drummer laying in his tracks. And you don't really replace a drummer on top of the other things. It's like drums has to go in first, right? So if we have, were to yeah. do it with the new drummer, we have to start everything over again. And that also seemed a bit stupid when we were this far. So so we're releasing the things in Pipeline as singles, you know, to get them out there. Yeah. After that, we're thinking of doing an album. And I mean, we, we do have 
we have many songs. We have so many songs, um, so we could easily fill an album. The question is if we, if the songs, I mean, what songs goes together? Like I said before, there are some songs going in a bit in that direction, some going a bit in that direction. I think it's it's fair enough that a band has a a broad a broad spectrum, I guess, but but each album should have its its sound. Um, so I think that what we're going to do is we're going to try to sort of pile them up and figure out what songs go together, and and then we'll release albums based on that. Yeah. Um, peop- nowadays, people I find that people have a hard time with bands that don't sound, you know, the same. Always, it's like the the music the music business has turned very slim in a way if that makes sense like, like a band has to really have a signature sound and you have to stay within your box um, and I don't want to mention any any names or point any fingers but it just seems to be a tendency right now and we've sort of decided not to do that too much I mean obviously we want to have something that people recognize as still skin but but we don't want all our songs to be the same song in a new key you know it's um it's very limiting if you can't also just go with where the song wants to go in a way. So obviously we try to to rock it up, but but some of the songs will be, you know, more uh, progressive, more almost leaning towards metal, and others will be, in essence, a pop song, but you know, with with oomph. <laughs> yeah, 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 with a bit of chucks. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so I mean, we have all of that. I mean, right now, if you listen to songs that are already out there, we have a song like "A Place Where Anything Could Happen," which is basically a pop stadium anthem. <laughs> uh, and on the same album, we have a song like "Broken," which is more in the Rise Again department. So, yeah, the first album is a bit of a mess, and I say that with a with a lot of love because I I like all the songs, but but it's sort of a palette of everything that still skin is or can be whereas the the future albums will probably be more homogenous in there you know internally on the on the albums that's the idea anyway yeah yeah well look i haven't actually heard the other songs yet um but i was about to say if, if anything sort of sounds production wise in regards to rise again i would say it's it, it has huge potential um, so sort of my, my, my next question, just, just from what you said is like, are you guys planning on sort of raising yourself or, or have you got any future plans of maybe trying to find a label or like what's, what's the future plans in regards to, uh, to, to the recordings and, and, and still skin in general? Right. Well, we, we definitely want to get our music out there. Um, I, I don't think that I say too much if I say that we as a band really want to, you know, we really want to go out there and live the life and and do the touring and we would love to have a label, but it's it's um, it's like the the hen and the the, the chicken and the egg <laughs> because yeah. you you want to have the labels you can go out there and play the gigs but you also want need to do the gigs and be visible for the label to be interested so it's like mm, where to start and that's why it's so annoying that that these gigs we had actually got cancelled because we had landed some pretty nice gigs over the summer of 2020 and they are now all you know they're all yeah. cancelled <laughs> uh, well not, not cancelled they have been postponed mm. A full, a full year. So uh, nothing's going to happen in 2020 in terms of music much, I'm afraid. Um, but I was listening very, very uh, focused when Espen was on last week because he was talking about how he, he started this new little label and what he wanted to do and his whole idea of, uh, you know, thinking international. I, I really agree with that. I was just sitting here, sitting, you know, nodding my head all the time because it is very well put what he said about you have to we live in a globalized world i mean you cannot just look at the pond denmark as a small small place and i mean there's not much room for bands of our type i mean let's be honest it's it's a bit of a niche in denmark but 
in Germany, for instance, that kind of music has a way, way broader audience. Um, so I think the what we need to do and what we want to do is to look at the world, see see where is the market for this kind of music. It doesn't matter if we play in Denmark or if we play in, I don't know, China. <laughs> uh, Australia. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Australia would be great. Uh, Woo! I mean, I actually think, I mean, there are a couple of Danish bands who have made it big in, you know, abroad, and I think it's, it must be great to be able to go to to uh, Asia and be a rock star for three months and go back and just sit in the pedestrian street of Aarhus and drink a cold beer and no one comes up to you or annoy you. <laughs> you just, you can be incognito at home. That must be great. Um, so not that we don't want to make it big in Denmark. Sure, we would, but, but it's not... Uh, that's not the important thing. The important thing is to to get an audience, yeah, wherever we can find it. So, yeah, right now we we start in Denmark, but and we have been talking to a couple of people who have shown interest, but you know it hasn't really caught on yet. So we're still looking. Yeah, man, um, it will come. Uh, it will come. <laughs> I hope so. It would be great. I mean, we, we definitely want to do it. And if the if the you know if the chance presents itself, uh, we all uh, have jobs that will be very understanding. <laughs> you know, so right, can, right. I mean, we we are we actually we are open to to you know just let go of everything. If we have that you know the golden opportunity, then we're gonna take it definitely. Well, that's that's quite uh, interesting to me because um, hmm. no no offense, but I'm assuming like you're all like you know a bit older than you know the young kids who are sort of yeah I know I'm the same here yeah, from the long coronavirus <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm letting it all grow grow since the whole lockdown shit uh, but anyway yeah. like, like I said like like you and I and, and 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 probably the rest of the band like we aren't 20 years anymore you know like we're we aren't spring chickens. So True. how do you how, how do you go about you know as a as you know being a middle aged man I suppose we all are now uh, how, how do you go about that to actually say look I still want to be a rock star I am I'm I'm, I'm going to go for it um, because again let's be honest here being a musician is probably the worst one of the worst business decisions you can make in the world uh, because unless you're playing as you mentioned yourself unless you're playing a lot of uh, a lot of stupid wedding gigs and cover band and cover gigs, you know, that, that'll get you by and pay the bills. But if you want to go out and, you know, dream of playing you know, stadium gigs and, 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 and arena tours and stuff, mm -hmm. there's a long way to the top. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely. Well, oh, there's, a, there's so many things in that question. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, first of all, um, only one of us have kids. Um, and he's divorced from the mother of the kids, so the mother okay. of the kids. So, so I mean, that they that could work. Um, so, and none of the rest of us have kids, so we don't have that obligation. Um, and then, I guess, I mean, we, we, if we were to do it, if, if we had the chance to actually go out there and give it a go, it, it would probably. It was, we would do it in our own way, of course. We wouldn't do it in the 20-year-old way. Uh, we would probably... I think what, what we bring to the table in, uh, is, is a maturity, and I, I don't mean... To, I'm coming off really old now when I say this, but, you know... It's, no, no, I, I get you. We just get just look, at, look at it in, a, in, in another way. I mean, we, we have things that we really want to do, and we're going to try to go for it. So maybe we don't have... Uh, I mean, we cannot sit in the studio for uh, days and days straight like like a teenage uh, band would be able to do. But we work very um, focused when we work, and we, we you know we have plans. So mm. we try to 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 make up for it with with structure, you could say. Yeah. Um. So so structure combined with, of course, a lot of uh, experience from all the things that we've done individually over the, the many years we've played music, all of us. Um, hopefully that, that will amount to something, but it is, I'm not going to lie, it is a difficult world because we, we, we did participate in some some competitions, I believe that was last year, 
was two years ago now, I forget. But you know, we have these competitions. I believe we have some of them in Australia as well, in Magenta and you know, yeah, battle of the bands and all that stuff. Yeah, battle of the, stuff like that. Yeah, where you yeah. sort of can, you can come as an upcoming band and you can try to you know get noticed. And um, I had the feeling, and it may it, it may just be a feeling that I have, but it, it seems like people have a hard time wrapping their head around a 40-year-old person being upcoming. Um, and they sort of, I don't know if they don't take us serious as, as, as an upcoming band or if they, they sort of think, uh, uh, of course you're not upcoming. Uh, I don't know, there's something there that, that just makes it a little extra difficult to get through through those channels. Mm. So that's why we sort of decided that, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try it sort of the old-fashioned way, which is, Play gigs, get noticed, you know, network. Yeah. Uh, so ho- hopefully uh, through through those channels we can we can build something up. And obviously you, you shouldn't um, underestimate the power of the internet. Uh, sitting here oh, talking no, to no. you, uh, uh, people streaming the music, getting onto people's playlists. Um, other streamers, uh, actually, uh, other YouTubers and other channels have actually played our music as well. We have some people with us who has, um, you know, friends of the band who has actually done some amazing footwork in trying to get us played on various tubes, channels, streams. Um, I guess, uh, you know, it all amounts to something. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't. I guess we still have a, a naive belief that you just have to be heard by the one right person, who can then maybe help us to the next step, you know. But but obviously it's it's hard work, and it's something that we as a band has to work, you know, very uh, focused and disciplined towards. Yeah. Uh, to, to get a chance to, but but for now we just we really just love playing the the stuff and we're just so bummed that we're not going to go out and play the music because what, one thing is making it, another thing is to just really get out there and actually connect to people and having people sing along to the songs you've written. That's that's still my my biggest my biggest buzz is when people in the audience on knows the lyrics of a song that I have written or co-written. That is. That is, crazy. it is, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it never gets old. <laughs> uh, it, it, so it's pretty special for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so f- most of all, it's about that. And most of all, it's about getting the music out there. And you know, then what happens happens. But I'm just saying that if if we were to actually get a break, we would definitely take it. Um, because we all we all want to try that. You know. Follow the dream. Try, try to live the life. Um, that would just be hilarious. That would be great fun. <laughs> but it's also, I don't, I don't know if you heard the motto: uh, "The harder you work, the luckier you get." Um, and that is, <laughs> you know, th- that 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 is effectively what what, what I think uh, the opportunity in music like you, you have today. Like you have so many avenues to use. And like as you mentioned yourself, you've got all the streaming avenues. You could there's so much stuff on the internet. Uh, so again, as an yeah. independent artist, I don't, I don't believe you need a label as much these days as you, as, as you would like. For instance, take it back to as you mentioned before. You know, when when, when you were uh, when you were a kid and you said you put your cassette in, you were, you were doing that sort of recording. Everybody, all musicians these days can record an album that's gonna sound freaking semi-pro in your in your bedroom. Mm. You know, you can buy a nice sound card. You can get a, a, a good, powerful computer. A, a decent microphone and, and and off you go uh even if you don't actually have a have a proper drum kit there's there, there's there's drum software out there like for instance like as you can see in the background here i've got i've got a, an electric drum kit uh, i've actually got a proper drum kit that that's just fitted with triggers so so it feels like a normal kit when i'm playing you can run that through a computer and it sounds like you've recorded drums in a in a in a high-end studio so you can make music today um uh, irrespective of budget and location, which, which I find extremely fascinating. Um, so again, yeah, like the, the options are there. It's just how you channel them. 
And I suppose what you said as well, if you guys are so, so, so devoted to sort of pursuing the dream uh, and you even have people helping you, um, I suppose it's just a matter of just, you know, setting, setting a couple of goals and, and, and really, you know, delegating jobs to do, to do different bits. Uh, I know you all have, have jobs, uh, to, to attend to in the background. Um, but, um, but, but yeah, in regards to sort of going for it and, and for, for the future, man, I would, I, I'd, I'd love to see someone who is, who is, who is 40 going for it. Um, I, I don't know. I don't actually know if you saw the stream. I had uh, I had a good friend of mine, uh, Craig Ballantyne, who was on uh, about a week ago. He's uh, he's in his fifties, an extremely talented songwriter from from Perth, who is doing the same thing. You know, he spent a year recording an album. He's done most of it himself. So so that's even tougher, you know, than than, than having you know a whole a whole band with him. Um, but yes, yeah, sitting down, getting all those uh, all, all those goals in place. Um, yeah, I, 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 I reckon. I reckon if you guys sat down and, and, and worked something out, it would be it would, it would be it would be fantastic. Have you have you got anything? Are, are, is, are any of you sort of really good at any specific avenues or any specific things like in regards to like I don't know Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook are uh, probably the, the most leading social media platforms. Are any of you guys sort of like looking into that, or, or, or how do you sort of progress and promote your music? Well, uh, I don't know if, if any of us are like particularly good at it, but we have sort of divided the, the work uh, a bit between us. Not uh, particularly evenly, but, <laughs> you know, it's just the way it has panned out. Um, a good friend of mine is, uh, is a good computer and uh, graphics person, and he, uh, he maintains our our uh, streams so he, he's the one releasing stuff for us and taking care of putting things up on Spotify and and various services and he also does the artwork for the the covers of the of albums and, and singles and then uh, we have one person mostly in charge of social media and obviously Jakob, who does a lot of the mixing, that's sort of his thing because he spends a lot of time in the studio tweaking and working on that. So, yes, a bit, uh, but uh, I don't know, it's, it's something that we we continually work on to see how, <laughs> how we use our time best. Um, oh, yeah, and then and we, a, a good friend of mine also... Um, does some some footwork in terms of you know getting us into various playlists that she thinks we we fit into. So I think that's actually a a bit of an underrated thing in this new world of digital music that uh, it, it might be more important than than you than you would think. Um, mm. So you know we'll see. Uh, it would be great if it uh, if we we could punch a hole through somewhere. That I was about to Australia and come to Perth. That was yeah, cool. absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, <laughs> the, I, I think that will have to draw. Well, I suppose we, we, we need to get the borders open first. Uh, at, at this point in time, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, but but yeah, there could be a plan for say 2021 and 22, depending on where we where, where we sort of end up at. Um, look, we've been we've been chatting now for for just over an hour um should we uh, should we try and uh, and, and round it up with uh, actually let me just quickly just uh, show our um your, your facebook page here uh you've got you, you've got a really really cool uh cover photo uh actually um and a lot of a lot of the photos on your web page look really professional as well um how does that go and i can see there is this awesome photo here from your i think that's from your rehearsal room that looks Insane, uh, huge, well, huge rehearsal room. I don't actually see what you're seeing right now, but I'll try anyway to comment on some of it. I mean, the, it's just some stuff from your from your from your from your from your Facebook page, right? Well, some of them is, is definitely actually made by a professional photographer. The if you look at that, the sort of the official band photo, which is pretty dark background, and we're sort of all standing there. Yeah. Um, 
that is with our old drummer though because <laughs> we just we just got the new drummer but right, right. <laughs> that aside uh, it's, it's actually taken <laughs> it's actually taken under a bridge in Copenhagen uh, shortly before we did a gig in Copenhagen where some of the other pretty cool photos are also taken so the, the photographer was sort of following us all evening so we got both that sort of official photo and we had something from the concert as well and the, yeah, the studio, I mean, we have a great studio, but those photos are just good old iPhones. <laughs> really? Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had a professional person in our studio yet. So the photos from the studio are taken by ourselves. Um, we're very fortunate to have a, a great studio uh, in, on two floors of, of studio. So the, the ground floor is where we play and rehearse and where we have a, a coffee corner to sit down and discuss things and upstairs uh, it's not uh, totally finished yet but that's going to be where the mixing goes on you have sort of a mix uh, corner uh, with monitors and such and and uh, a corner with uh, you know sofas and a big screen for sitting down and chilling and watching a good concert or something together <laughs> so so it's sort of a, a very nice and very uh, inspiring uh, setting we have uh, at the studio it's great oh it, it definitely looks like like that rehearsal room alone looks looks huge um and i noticed there was like a projector in the ceiling as well yeah yeah well i, <laughs> I, well, I suppose i suppose again yeah you, you, you probably have to dream big you know if you want to play stadiums you got to have a massive <laughs> a massive rehearsal room sort of set the Can't be able set, to move, you know <laughs> ex exactly exactly um, Michael, look, let, let us try and, uh, and, and wrap this up and look, it'd be awesome to, uh, to, to maybe get you back, uh, maybe, maybe even get another, another person from the bank coming back a little bit later on when, uh, when the whole yeah. virus stuff is down and you guys are actually allowed oh, to yeah. catch up in person. Um, yeah. is there any, is, can you just do a little bit of shout out in regards to, um, to where people can, can find you and, um, and look into a little bit more like in regards to you, you haven't got an Instagram, Facebook website and all that stuff. Yeah, well, you, you more or less just said everything there, but I can just uh, let's see if I can sum it up. We're on Instagram uh, at uh, Stillskin Rock, and we're on Facebook at uh, Stillskin DK, as in Denmark. Um, and those are actually our main platforms. We have a website as well, Stillskin.dk. Um, but for you know, for uh, actual. Uh, news I would go to Instagram or Facebook those are sort of the places that we maintain yeah on a on the most regular basis right now uh, so feel free to come along and 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 check us out and and also on the all the streaming services of course we you can hear all the stuff that we have out right now on Spotify and Apple music and you know a whole host of other streaming services and remember we get about Five, fem ure, five, what is that in 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 uh, uh, oh. Australian cent? <laughs> zero, uh, zero, yeah. zero two cent per time For you the, listen to a song. So For streams, a yeah. lot of streams, you know, because <laughs> it's just hilarious. You make no money from streaming, but it's a way of being seen, right? You've got to make a million streams, and and then and then you've got yeah. enough to buy to buy a case of beer or something. Yeah, exactly. To so, so, so celebrate, you know. <laughs> no, but I mean, right now, actually, the the streaming actually more or less pays for the release of the next single. So, so in that way, it maintains itself in a way, which is kind of nice, I guess. But yeah, we would love more, definitely. So please jump in and feel free to listen all day long and add us to all your playlists. <laughs> super, super, super embarrassing. I actually hadn't liked the page. I just did that now, and I encourage everybody else to go in and uh, shame on you and have a look. Yeah, I know it's horrible, but it's there now forever. <laughs> Perfect. Um, so awesome. It. Again, Michael, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Um, and listening to all your all your stories about, uh, especially about all the future plans and how you guys work as a band. And as I said, I'd I'd love to have you guys uh, back. You know, in the future, when um, when when the world is a, is a bit bluer, or the sky is blue, and everything is a bit more positive as well. Um, just as a final note here, can you introduce um, the beautiful "Rise Against" song? 
And just tell us what this song is about. <laughs> Ooh, uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a controversial theme, actually. <laughs> Rise Again is our new single, and it's uh, basically about domestic abuse. Um, and oh, there is wow. a bit of there's a there's a little Easter egg uh, hidden in the song that might give you a bit of a clue as to the nature of the abuse. But I'm not gonna tell. You're gonna have to listen very carefully. We will. Michael, a cliffhanger, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> I'll I'll be I'll be putting it on now. Uh, Michael, again, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, I'll, I I can't wait to hear to hear more from you guys and uh, and hopefully have you guys back soon. Thank you very much for having me. It was a blast. Awesome. Cheers, Michael. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in or listening along to the show. If you like the show, please don't forget to leave a five-star review and subscribe to my social channels. It doesn't cost you anything, but it greatly helps me to build my networks and my chances of getting sponsors to keep this show running. If you want to take it to the next level, please head over to patreon.com slash Stephen Hellhammer and become a patron by joining the exclusive community there. You can start from as little as $3 per month. And for just a little extra, you get access to some fantastic features, outtakes, behind the scenes stuff, and much, much more. That's less than the cost of a cup of coffee per month. And that way you can help me build better content. I can devote more time to find awesome guests and just generally just keep everything flowing. If you want to be on the show or subscribe to my mailing list, send an email to steven at hellhammer.com. And that is H-E-L hammer.com. That way I can start sending you exclusive invites, random stuff and messages that who knows you might enjoy. So that's it. Have a rocking day ahead guys and I will see you on the live stream or in your headphones very soon. Take it easy.